All right, take two. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to day two of this summit. It's Catherine Massell, Elevated Consciousness Coach and New Earth Visionary. Today I'm going to talk about the badge of productivity, prizing multitasking over present awareness. Very, very, very practical tip. And something that I think we're all lacking in is presence. And so I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. I'm going to see if anybody's going to jump on here. Um, I am, if you're not familiar with me, the sole curator of this group and this event. So sometimes we have people drop out at the last minute. That's okay. That's life. That's what happens. Turns out I'm never lacking for things to talk about. So I was able to come up with something to talk about that I think is pretty important and practical and something you can apply to everyday life because that's the kind of ascension I am invested in, practical ascension. So maybe we'll get some more people jumping on here, but either way, hello everyone. Nice to have you here. Nice to have you as audience members. So great to have the presenters in here. Always so blown away by what everyone shares. And I've been binging on this event. I know we've got people all over the globe in here, so it's pretty exciting to watch people. Hi, Nancy. Thanks for your presentation. Hi, Denise. We've got people all over the globe. So I know with the, uh, the time zones, it can be tricky to catch everyone live, but I appreciate you guys showing up and supporting everyone as much as you can. So this is something that we talked about the other day in my Strong Supported Healer group. This is a group that I'm teaching right now that is really powerful for those who identify as way, shoulder, sh way showers, um, new earth leaders, placeholders of new earth, um, visionaries, thought leaders, energy healers, those who identify with having a significant role here in helping with this unfolding of the New Earth timeline and grounding it into reality. There's this responsibility that comes with being someone who would wear the mantle of one of those titles. That our work is too big to fail. And this is something we hit on quite a bit in this program. And if you wanted to join, we're about halfway through. And this is really, really powerful because this is a time where those people who identify as being way showers, thought leaders, placeholders of the new earth, when we wear that mantle of way shower. And therefore, we need to be able to step up a little bit more. And we can't afford to just not feel. All right, and I'm back. So way showers, thought leaders, visionaries, we have a greater responsibility to keep going in the work that we're doing. We can't give up. We can't afford to give up. Our work is too important. And so this is what this course is all about. This eight week program is all about. And we were talking about the other day, we were working through a module of talking about self doubt, because this is big. This hits home for many of us right now. We feel hopeless. We feel put upon by the world events. We feel like, what does it all mean anyway? There's a kind of feeling of, you know, resignation and futility often in the work that we do. There's no one listening to me. You know, I don't, I don't feel the strength to carry on in my message. I don't feel the strength to keep evolving in my work. I'm still trying to throw, you know, spaghetti at the wall in my business as a way shower and nothing's working. So we are grappling with a lot of doubt. And to work through any of these things where we don't feel strong, we don't feel supported enough, et cetera, we feel doubt, um, we, don't, we don't have a lot of self-belief and a lot of self-esteem, a lot of confidence. When we're working with any of these key aspects, we always have to go back to foundational level stuff. We have to go back to, first of all, first and foremost, being present. And this is something that most of us are lacking. It's something that we are trained out of from a very young age because we are constantly conditioned to either look at something that happened before 
And a lot of us find, you know, ourselves in present times lamenting the past um, or, you know, or languishing in some past event or some, you know, past realized trauma or, or whatever. Or we are putting too much of our energy, siphoning off our energy towards a future potential that is not written yet. It's not etched into reality. And so what this always does is it, it divests us of the most powerful resource that we have is our energetic potential that is or could be invested in the present, in the now, because in a cosmic sense, the now is all there is. We don't have anything else. The past and future are essentially both hallucinations. They're illusory. They're intangible, in other words. And the only thing we have now is now, and the ability to either when we are lamenting or languishing in the past, or worrying about, or putting our all our eggs in one basket of a future potential that hasn't played out yet, what we're doing is siphoning off this valuable energetic real estate of being in the now, of being present. And we're so good at it, and we kind of prize this ability to be able to, you know, strive towards these potentials that don't exist. And we are striving towards the past sometimes when we're thinking about how we want our life to be, like we might say, well, I want it to be like it was five years ago when I was doing this, my business was doing that, and et cetera. And you might think that you're investing in your present awareness to do something about it, but you're not. You're siphoning off really valuable energetic potential that could be better used for, well, what are you doing right now? Okay, if your mental matter is busy worrying about something else, you're kind of multitasking in that way, okay? So we can mentally multitask by constantly worrying about the past and constantly worrying about the future, okay? None of which is really supporting you or helping you, okay? Not to say that you can't strive towards a future potential, but what are you doing with that now? What action, behavior, what deed are you endeavoring to do to fulfill that potential now? Because that's all there is. Another way we kind of multitask is we physically multitask. And hello, women, I'm speaking to you. You know, we wear this kind of badge of productivity, I like to call it. And this is what we were discussing the other day in the Strong Supported Healer, that as women, oftentimes, and men do this too, but I think women are a little more adept at it, <laughs> that we prize this ability to multitask and do a million things at once, and we can, you know, fulfill a lot of needs and, and, you know, place our energy on tasks that, yes, need to be performed, need to be done, because it's the daily, you know, regimen of our lives, isn't it? You know, those of us who are moms and, you know, have been put upon even more by having to maybe homeschool their kids in the light of the last three years and everything that's been happening with the pandemic and, and things like that. Um, you know, having to take care of loved ones who aren't really good at taking care of themselves or have special needs. And so our, you know, energies are invested towards that. I'm not saying any of this stuff is bad. I'm just saying we're being pulled in a million different directions all the time. And that's not even talking about the things that we want to fulfill as our own goals and dreams and desires and ambitions, which ends up really coming last. And so we wear this badge of productivity saying, well, I'm being useful. I'm doing all these wonderful things and I'm putting my energy here and there and I'm taking things off my to-do list every single day and I'm killing it at life. But all of these things, as important they, as they might be to just perpetuate our everyday existence, are often something that we prize ourselves as being able to do, commit to, tick off as an item on a list instead of taking more of that potential, more of that energy, and putting it towards what it is that we really have as our ambition, our desire. If we were to funnel that much effort and fund that much effort towards the things that we truly, truly, truly desire, our bigger vision, and I'm not just saying like, I got to get through the week, I got to get through the day, which often, sadly, becomes our vision <laughs> and becomes 
a self-fulfilling prophecy. Of course you're going to get through the day. Of course you're going to get through the week. But is that the end-all be-all of your ambition? Okay. Or is your, hi Pamela, is your greater ambition, is your greater vision to, you know, have this dream house, to have a life where you work less and earn more? How much, you know, every day are you prioritizing and funding towards that endeavor? Which ultimately can lead to, well, maybe I wouldn't have to, if I was fulfilling more of this bigger vision for myself, maybe I wouldn't have to be such a multitasker in my own life. Maybe I wouldn't have to wear this badge of productivity telling myself kind of in this place of self-denial, I'm accomplishing so much. Are you really though? If you were living out your big vision, perhaps you could delegate some of that stuff that you tick off on a list every day to someone else. Someone who's maybe more qualified, someone that you could pay to do these things. Um, this is kind of the the weird liminal space that we find ourselves in. We're in such a liminal space in so many ways in this timeline in planet Earth as we're transitioning into new Earth and transitioning towards unity consciousness and a higher overall planetary timeline. We're in such a liminal space here where all of the, the ways that we've been living out of alignment with our source self, our soul-led self, it's all being illuminated now. It's like we can't not see it anymore. And I guess the gift in the garbage of living in this time where everything is in a state of upheaval, it's bringing all the places where we've been in self-denial, self-betrayal, self-abandonment, not been living true to our goals, our big vision, etc. It's all coming up into the light. But the real question is, what are we going to do about it? And so this multitasking way of being that even though we may feel like it has kept things afloat, it's also more important to look at, it's been keeping us in a kind of survival mode mentality. When we're multitasking, our attention is not really focused on present awareness. Not really because we are being drawn in too many different directions at once. And when our focus is so split among so many things, we're not really focused on a singular um, event or a singular um, focus. We're not really present. And when we're not really present, we're missing out on a lot of things, synchronicities messages from the universe, nudges from the universe, if you want to call them that. Uh, little moments where the universe speaks through the people we're interacting with, the situations we're interfacing with. All of these things get missed when we're in this constant, like, productivity mode and multitasking, right? And it's, it is such a, a symptom of modern day society to wear this badge of productivity and I mean like we wear it like a badge of honor that we can do all these things at once where productivity is prized so greatly like constantly doing 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 and as someone who is in constant observer mode trying to be objective about it as much as I possibly can you know watching even through this pandemic where everything had to slow down where we had to pull back from so many things in our society it was still amazing to me how much messaging there was around still being productive. Above all else, we have to prize being productive. And that's probably true more in the West than it is in the East. But still, productivity prized above all else. And from an objective observer and a compassionate witness standpoint, looking at it through the lens of unity consciousness, which is how I try to teach and share and live my own life in alignment with the practices and principles and ethics of unity consciousness. Looking at productivity through the lens of that is a huge distraction from presence. And the more we're present, the more we pay attention to what's really going on, the messaging of what's really going on, the agendas to what's really going on, the darkness and shadow plays of what's really going on. Presence is a tool of change. 
And we can't deny that there are certain forces on this planet at large that do not want us to change for the better. So the more we have these, if you want to call them weapons of mass distraction, employed every single day in our lives, including our daily to-do list that allows us to feel productive, the less present we're going to be, the less empowered, in other words, we're going to be to really look at what's going on. And not just in our own lives, but in our communities and in the world at large. I so resonate with this message. Yes, yes. And we all feel it. So on a really, really practical level, I want to ask you, I want to invite you, where might you be wearing this badge of productivity in your own life? And I'm not saying that it's not important to make sure your family gets fed and your kids, you know, are, you're able to help them with their schooling and their homework and et cetera and things like that. These are so important. But equally as important, and I would argue maybe even more so, how much time are you spending on presence, on just being, just sitting? I remember this. <laughs> it's so funny what my mind tends to conjure up when I think about stuff like this, but I remember a Seinfeld episode uh, back when it was on air in the 90s. There was this moment where Elaine, character on Seinfeld, was just sitting, and she was just sitting in a chair, and Jerry Seinfeld walks in, and he's like, what are you doing? She's like, just sitting. And then the audience, the canned laughter, just sitting? That's all you're doing? Yeah. Just sitting. Just thinking. And then more laughter. And Jerry Seinfeld looking at her like she had three heads. And that really hit home for me in a lot of ways because when we think of, of presence and just sitting and doing nothing, the knee-jerk reaction can often be, well, that's silly. You should be doing something. And that's exactly the most fucked up idea <laughs> about, you know, prizing productivity over everything else that even if it's some little thing like picking up dust bunnies from your you know wood floors or something that's better than doing nothing okay and so the, the messaging is there if you're paying attention constantly of be productive do something do something do something keep going keep doing stuff and even when we had to pull back so much from everything in life in this pandemic which we're still reeling from, the messaging around being productive was still there, which I find really interesting. And so it, it, it makes you really look at, well, if that's such a, such a pervasive and powerful message, why? Why is that such a powerful message? Why are we constantly inundated with this idea of being productive all the time? And why is that being prized above all else? Because when we take a beat, when we take a minute, and I'm talking like a minute, I'm talking 60 seconds, and breathe and be present, we start to become aware. And when we allow that awareness to ripple out past our immediate focus or immediate locus of attention, we start to have that ripple out and branch out. We start to become aware of other things. We start to sit with what is in us in our general, what is around us in our general vicinity. We start to look at the world at large. We start to become aware of how we feel, what kind of emotions we're carrying around. The emotions being how we feel and think about how we're feeling. Because we all have feelings. We have a nervous system. So we're responding to everything in life all the time. But how are we thinking and feeling about how we're feeling? When you have awareness, you allow that to ripple out into full presence, then you really start to get somewhere. You start to realize that like, okay, this might be a problem for me to feel this way, or this might not be the best thing for me to be doing at this time. And here's why. We start to uncover and discover more about our actual reality. And that awareness is something that a lot of people on this planet would not like you to have. Just breathe. Absolutely. Absolutely. So does this make sense? Does this hit home for you guys? Yes, it's programming. It's conditioning. And from the time we're very young, right? I remember my parents 
telling me, you know, on a Saturday, like, get out and do something. And I would just be sitting or drawing after my Saturday morning cartoons and my giant bowl of cereal, of course. <laughs> and after Kung Fu Theater, I would be, you know, either drawing or having projects, whatever. And it'd be a beautiful day outside. But my parents would be like, well, why don't you go do something? Go, you know, rake the leaves in the backyard or go do something for the neighbor. Or do something, right? Be productive. And that just sitting in my room sometimes was not even worthy of, you know, my time, my own time being with myself. I felt like not a lot because eventually I fought for it and won was not good enough. I should be doing something, right? Work, 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 retire, die. Yes, totally makes sense, right? I think I missed some more comments here, but. So where are you wearing that badge of productivity in your life? Where can you pull back on the multitasking even just a little bit? I'm not saying don't, you know, place importance on the things in life that need to be done. But oftentimes we're doing something in our multitasking like we get to a point where we burn out so much and we need a rest and our rest is then getting on social media or, um, you know, looking at our Facebook or Instagram account or maybe watching the news. And so, again, we're just opening up ourselves to the hive mind of consciousness and then more programming around be productive or you're not enough. Right. That's another thing we talked about <laughs> when we when we tune in to the messaging and the conditioning that's all around us. It's always messaging around lack and scarcity. So that makes us want to be more productive so we can do more, be enough. Enough compared to what? Enough? Okay. Enough compared to what? Who's setting that standard? Are you setting that standard? Are you even in charge of setting that standard? Or are you giving away that power as well? Or thinking that you can. You can never really give away your power, but you can put your attention and focus on something that is unwholesome to you and unwholesome and not necessarily aligning you with your highest and best goals, ambitions, desires, and dreams, right? So I invite you to think about that. Presence, where can you pull back just a little bit from some of the things that you're constantly saying, I have to do more, I have to do this so I can be enough. Enough compared to who? Enough compared to what, right? So, this is the work that we're doing in Strong Supported Healer. It really is a program all about inspiring those on this planet who feel very, very invested in funding their potential towards driving this timeline further towards unity consciousness, creating a more egalitarian way of being on the planet. And it directly involves their work, their thought leadership, etc., their visionary capabilities. And those, those who identify that way but feeling really depleted of their strength, needing more support and wanting more fortitude, resilience, resolve to be able to show up for themselves and really support themselves. So that's what this program is inspiring you to do. And it's a very low cost investment. It's only 222. It's going to be going up because I'm going to be teaching it again in April. And it's incredibly powerful if you need this level of inspiration. It's, an, it's a really valuable investment, high value, low investment. My courses, my programs tend to go to three, four times that amount, sometimes five times that amount. So if you feel called to this, I invite you to come join us. We're still teaching it live and you have lifetime access to the program. And when I teach it again in April, you're able to come back even when the price goes up. So I'm going to introduce our next presenter. I'm very, very excited to have all of you presenters in here, just bringing the best of the best of who you are. It's amazing. We've got Alice Heath up next. She's going to be talking about voice of your womb. And I'm super, super excited to introduce her and have her here. And then you're going to see me again at 11 a.m. where I'm going to be talking about mental resilience in earth transition. You don't want to miss this one. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.